Greetings everyone. So we meet again with another video and the object of today's video is to discuss with you the questions that have been asked in Delhi Judicial Service Examination for 2023's notification. Uh, one of my video in YouTube has given you the information about the release of the notification and one of my video was doing the previous year question paper analysis and I was I gave you uh, the repeated questions that were asked in the past few years so that you can prepare them uh, accordingly and also I have discussed with you how to attempt the questions that have come that what kind of mindset you must keep what has to be done by those 15 uh, minutes that are given extra to you and what should be your strategy uh, briefly that what should be your strategy uh, while you are attempting the questions. Now uh, on 17 December when they have already conducted the examination we have the questions with us. So I am bringing uh, the videos in parts because otherwise it is going to be a very long video in which 200 questions will be discussed because what I will do I will see the question and see what the answer would be and uh, this kind of video will mainly help you to understand the questions that were little long that means the conceptual part of it the conceptual questions you understand very well that qu the, the question paper is divided into two parts factual and conceptual uh, factual here means that when the only the fact the bare fact is asked from you which can be gathered from the bare act second is the conceptual part of it where uh, you have to also analyze that what is the concept behind it because it is not written anywhere I will uh, discuss with you several questions uh, in which you will see that I will start with the uh, premise that this is not written anywhere. However, it is a concept that has been evolved. This is a concept which is there behind it because the cases have recognized it and the principles of law have always uh, identified those concepts. So that is why the answer is going to be this, although you cannot see it somewhere very specifically written. So uh, the, the object is that if I'm going to deal with 200 questions at a stretch, uh, then it will be a very long video because every question will take few minutes to be discussed. So that is why I have divided it into three parts. This is the first part that we are discussing. Uh, that is mainly for the criminal part of the question. That is CPC, uh, sorry, uh, CRPC, IPC and POCSO. So I will be discussing the questions that have been asked in these three uh, subjects mainly and then there will be a next part in which I will be discussing all the subjects pertaining to civil laws, for example, CPC, Limitation, SRA, Commercial Courts Act, Arbitration um, and other, uh, I hope that I have dealt with it. Uh, yeah, that, that, is, that is what it is, CPC, SRA, Limitation, CCA and Arbitration, the second video in which there are going to be around 60 to 65 questions. And uh, in this video, there will be 60 questions that I will discuss with you. Few will be very quick because it is based upon the, uh, the, the, the Bear Act provisions because provisions are going to give you the direct answers. Few will be that which we want to discuss and discussion is not going to be that long. But at least I will tell you that what is uh, the answer and how it came. How could you understand that this answer was there? And then the third video will be uh, with respect to evidence, constitution, contract, uh, limited liability, partnership, legal GK and most probably English. It would be around uh, around 65 to 70 questions. And I have also found out one, one uh, major fact that this time, uh, although in one of my video uh, when I was discussing the previous year questions, I have told you that they will be asking around 15 questions from English and 10 questions from legal GK and there will be around uh, 45 to 55 questions from the non-conventional subjects for example from POSCO and then from arbitration. From arbitration I have told you that they, they had they, the last time they have asked up 15 questions. This time also they have repeated it the uh, that uh, 15 questions have been asked from uh, the arbitration, 14 questions have been asked from arbitration and uh, POCSO they have asked 5 questions and then limited liability partnership they have asked 3 questions, commercial code they, act, they have asked 9 questions, a good deal of uh, questions that they have asked from these subjects 
and if we see there are total 34 questions that have been asked from this these four subjects only which are non conventional subjects only asked in pre so they have asked around 24 questions from this and 29 questions from english and legal gk which total cumulatively uh, it is 63 questions that they have asked so you understand the value of these subjects so only from these four subjects they have asked you around four subjects plus legal gk and uh, uh, the the english they have asked you around 63 questions that means it boils down to at least 33 percent one third of the paper belongs to these subjects only which were non-conventional that is why i asked you in that particular video specifically that you have to prepare them first because one third of the question paper was dedicated to it sometimes it may go more so you cannot expect any lesser but you can expect that they will uh, increase the number of questions from these subjects time and again or if, uh, in the upcoming consecutive examination so you yeah, th this is one of one a lesson that i'm uh, asking you or a request i'm uh, making it to you that whenever you are attempting any particular state whatever are the non conventional subjects non conventional means conventional subjects are those which you otherwise read you read for every state so those are those uh, subjects which are common in every state but sometimes few uh, subjects are asked differently or those which you do not read in either your uh, LLB or you do not read it otherwise because you are not interested to read it because you are more interested in reading CPC, CRPC, evidence and all those traditional subjects. Kindly do these non-conventional or non-traditional subjects first, get hold of it, only then you will be like, having an edge. So whom, uh, who sh whoever would have done these subjects properly, POCSO, LLB, namely the POCSO, LLP, commercial court, arbitration and who those who have attempted legal GK and English properly, they have attempted 63 questions uh, with, with good uh, possibility of hitting correct, uh, correct, uh, correct answers. That is something that we wanted. That is something I was asking you to do that whomsoever would have attempted these 63 questions properly and more hit rate uh, could be uh, seen in these questions, I would say that they have already got the edge of clearing the examination, at least the preliminary examination. Because one third uh, paper was comprised of it and then the rest of the one third was, was only with CPC and CRPC. I am just giving you this fact so that you understand that how you have to check the mindset of the commission. CPC and CRPC both together made the one third. So that means in this time they have asked 30 30 questions from both. So 60 questions to yahi pe aage. So one third uh, examin one third uh, question paper was dedicated to these two subjects. And now whatever was remaining out of those 14 subjects, now whatever is remaining, uh, uh, you minus the four to uh, six and these two eight. Out of 14, you minus eight. Uh, six subjects it was uh, having a good chunk. That means the rest of the one third was dedicated to them. Clear? So they become very, very important. This is the edge that anyone could get because you otherwise read CPC and CRPC. Everyone prepares for these subjects. Everyone prepares for constitution, CRPC, CPC, contract, IPC, evidence. Everyone reads about it. Everyone prepared the threadbare. But people, they tend to not even touch these non-conventional subjects or they just leave it so that whenever they get time they will do it first of all you do all these things because here everyone would be facing the same challenges that uh, even a person who would have read it so properly would be facing so it's always important to read the non-conventional first and get an edge there and then here i will also suggest that in rajasthan and mp whatever are the non-conventional for example in mp i'm just giving an example for example, in NP, if, if you see that the, there is a section of uh, GK which is pertaining to the uh, Madhya Pradesh state only, there is a section which is pertaining to the uh, knowledge of computer sciences or general knowledge of the computers, those 20 questions are very important for you to attempt. Again, in Rajasthan, if you go, you see that English and Hindi are uh, having a good weightage in the examination. 30 questions are asked from that. If you prepare those 30 questions properly out of 30, if you even score 20 and 29, you already have an edge. Because in conventional subjects, everyone is doing the same uh, 
labor. So you have to understand that how you have to uh, strategize your preparation while you are attempting any examination. So I've told you already, having said these, uh, I've told you already that today I'm dealing with in this video, at least in this video, I'm dealing with uh, three subjects. That is POCSO, Code of Criminal Procedure and Indian Penal Code. Three, the, these three subjects and the questions pertaining to it will be discussed in this video. It will be quick and brief so that we know that why the answer came like this and what is what should be the answer. Uh, I don't know if by the time we release this video that you may also get your answer key so you can match it. Doesn't matter. It also helps you to find out if there is any objection to the question then you can always uh, see to it that what is the source of these answers because sometimes you are confused uh, even if uh, you are no more in the requirement of getting these answers or to know that what are the answers because you now would be preparing for the mains examination this will help you to uh, at least nothing but corroborate that you have marked it correctly second for all those who are willing to give Delhi Judicial Service examination in the upcoming uh, notifications. For them, it is important that you see the nature of the questions that they ask because we are discussing each and every question in these videos, at least three videos, uh, so that you are more equipped and acquainted with what to do while these, ex uh, these questions come up. And what kind of strategy do they keep before even deciding that what kind of questions should we give to the uh, students. So it is good for the upcoming aspirants and all those who have given the examination if you want to just cross check and see that uh, the same logic were applied by you because sometimes you mark the questions correctly but you didn't know that if it was a right answer. That confusion will also be removed if you will see that and also you will see that how to see that even the straightforward questions are given in a certain way. That means even the factual questions are given in a certain way that you have to apply some mind because silly mistakes would have happened from uh, from your end. Why, how to remove those uh, silly mistakes and why these silly mistakes occur, that is something becomes of value. So these this video might help you in that too. So let us begin with the questions. So the sequence is going to be this, POCSO, CRPC and IPC and I have asked them in this slide to uh, actually give you the question number only and before I begin with it I would just like to tell you that uh, this is a questions given through set B so I am dealing with the questions of set B correct if I even if I would have uh, uh, made one two three four it does not make any sense because anyhow you would you would have to see in your particular set that with where is this question so I am telling you that I am discussing these questions uh, by referring to set B. So let's start with question number 10. Question number 10 in set B was with respect to POCSO. Uh, and uh, I think I have seen the entire, as the, the, the entire sets. There was no occasion that I could see that if uh, a particular subject was taken care by the series of questions, they were shuffled. So, for example, uh, for POCSO also, section uh, question number 10 was POCSO and then it went to the last of the question paper. So, it was shuffled. There was no sequence or series to it. Although, it does not even matter because if we know, we know. If we know the fact, we know the fact. So, question number 10 was pertaining to prevention of children from Sexual Offences Act. It was asking you about the punishment which you could see that they are... Uh, directly asking whoever commits this shall be punished. That means they are asking you about the punishment. Section 6 gives you the punishment of prevent protection of children from sexual offenses when they commit, when someone commits aggravated penetrative sexual assault. Now there is one take on this that if uh, you have to remember the punishments for every offense, if you can, yes, because there is no uh, category of offenses that they give to you from which they will ask you about the punishments. We can only strategize by seeing the previous year questions, but we have seen through experiences that uh, the observation is such that they ask you from any offense whatsoever, but mainly they concentrate upon the heinous offenses or those offenses which are generally oft used by the courts 
for example penetrative sexual assault is one uh, an arena which is in which was newly introduced in this particular act so they could ask you from this particular section but that is not the only factor you have to remember the punishments for all and this is where the actual labor comes that means this is where you have to work a lot so if you know you know that means agar aapko ye fact pata tha tabhi aap isko sahi mark karenge now in such kind of situations what happens that they bring some confusion to you for example if you read section 6 you will see that it is talking about 20 years minimum and then to life imprisonment and fine plus fine or death that means death can also be given to you if you see 20 years till life imprisonment and fine it is given under the second portion the, the second uh, option but this is not totally correct because there is a better option that you have the better option is option number 4 where it is written rigorous imprisonment for a term which shall not be less than 20 years but which may extend to imprisonment for life which shall mean imprisonment for remainder and shall also be liable to fine or with death this is exactly the reiteration of section 6 or with death is missing under option number 2 and it is here and this is exactly what is written under the section uh, section 6 so this will be a better uh, option so option number 4 the answer will be for question number 10 the answer will be 4 i hope you understand that this is how we are going to do it wherever it is required that why the answer is we will discuss that too now you see after question number 10 directly the question paper the set b has jumped to section 156 so we will see that what is there in section 156 uh section 156 is talking about a with sexual intent touches the breast of x a boy aged 12 years under the protection of children from sexual offences act a has committed the offence of now if you see section 156 is pertaining to section 7 and section 7 clearly enumerates certain areas that if someone touches a child uh Uh, i just read it for you whoever with sexual intent if someone touches the child in these areas with sexual intent the areas are vagina penis anus and breast of the child that means there are four areas which they are talking about if in these four areas if they touch with sexual in intent whoever touches with sexual intent a child Uh, or makes the child touch the vagina penis anus or breast of such person or any other person or does any other act with sexual intent which involves physical contact without penetration is said to commit sexual assault that means it is the offense of sexual assault number 1 is your option number 1 is your answer so this is based on the direct information from the provision so there is no analysis that we have to put on here and anyhow it is aged 12 years so it is a child is this clear i think uh, these kind of questions you understand that what does that mean theek hai and child if you want to see because 12 years is written here so section uh, 2d states that child means any person below the age of 18 years that means 12 years is a child kyunki 18 saal se niche wala hi bachcha bata rahe hai section 2d mein define kiya hua hai child ko so everything falls good everything is good sexual assault is your answer 156 then if you see 157 it is talking about which of the following is not a requirement for the medical examination of a child under section 27 of the pokso act 2012 see that what way they are asking you the questions they are asking you direct questions but they want you to read each and every ingredient properly look at the trade that they want you in even when i was dealing with the dgs notification the first video not the video of 2023 but when i am discussing about a 2022 notification that is also is available in the drishti judiciary youtube channel if you could see that uh, in that also i have told you that kindly look towards the question in a way that they will tell you that what they want from you if you actually work on the, their desires their their what they need out of you what kind of uh, personality are they looking for or what kind of mind do they want you to apply uh, while you are into this profession then you know that what kind of mind you have to keep and the strategy that you must keep for the preparation so look see here they are asking you factual questions but factual questions are also not in a way that they are asking you directly in which section it is given 
and what is the imprison or what is the punishment or uh, this is given in which section or this this is uh, that, that either they will ask you the number the, the section number for example they will ask you sexual assault is given in which section or they will ask you section 7 states defines what this is not they are doing they are actually putting you into each and every ingredient of that question understand this fact each and every ingredient of this question because look at the nature of this question which of the following is not the requirement not a requirement for medical examination that means there will be several requirements in medical examination all those requirements you have to read because if you don't know any of the requirement you are not able to attempt this question that means they want you to read every section properly with every ingredient there in your mind because even if you miss one even if there is one ingredient missing in you right now or you cannot recall you will never be able to attempt these kind of questions this is how sharp they want your memory to be this is how they want you to achieve to the point that revision is the key revise it remember it always because once you remember it here everything you are tend to make your muscle work every day and this is how you will remember the facts properly this is how you will remember the law always while you practice while you uh, while you are uh, acting uh, while you are performing your duties as a judge acting judicially how you are going to be into that uh, flow it is only because you are doing it again and again and this is what they want so see they are giving directly the reference of section 27 and let's see there in section 27 what is there uh, section 27 is about medical examination of a child uh, let's see that uh, how what they are what it is pertaining to in case the victim is a girl child the medical examination shall be conducted by a women doctor in presence of the women investigating officer the medical examination shall be conducted in presence of the parent of the child or any person in whom the child reposes trust in case the victim is a girl child the medical examination shall be conducted by a women doctor if you see that third and first are almost same but with a different with some addition that here it is written in the presence of a women investigating officer otherwise first and third relates each other why because it is the same statement that they have reiterated then they have written the medical examination shall be conducted in accordance with section 164a I think even if you don't know at the, this juncture, even if you don't know uh, all the things, but if you see that they have already given you two statements alike with only uh, one difference that there is some addition here and there is no addition here, then that means there is a confusion between this fact only. So if you clearly remember the fact that if you see here uh, section 27 uh, sub, -clause, sub clause 2, Section 27, sub clause 2 is clearly stating the, the in the case of victim, in the case the victim is a girl child, which is written here, uh, the medical examination shall be conducted by a women doctor. That's it. It ends there. And this is where it ends. In the presence of the women investigating officer, this is a wrong addition. That means this is not the requirement this is the requirement and what they are asking which of the following is not a requirement this is not a requirement that means ye requirement nahi hai. Koi investigating officer nahi chahiye. women doctor tak ruk gaye the. these three are correct statements this is a wrong statement sometimes you have to just see that if the options are giving us any indication where we have to put our mind before even you go into confusion i hope clear so one is your answer 157 one is your answer Clear? Next. Under the Protection of Children from Sexual Offences Act, the special court shall complete the trial as far as possible within the period of. I think if you have read the whole entire uh, act properly, these kind of facts can generally be stated. Wherever you find periods uh, or durations, these becomes very, very important for pre preliminary examination. I think I have already. Uh, told you about all these things in some previous videos. So it is section 24.1 clearly states uh, that uh, sorry no it is 35.2 uh, 35.2 which clearly states that it, it should be 
from uh, from the date of cognizance one year is the time that you have got to finish the trial section 352 so there is no discussion required it direct ye ignore bahut hi factual sawal pucha under section 24 of the protection of children uh, from sexual offenses act the statement of a child victim shall as far as practicable be recorded by uh, then again it is a very straightforward question if you know you know that means if you have this fact in your mind you will mark it directly very correctly which is section 241 uh, in which in the last uh, line they have said that uh, in the women police officer not below the rank of a sub inspector so it could be it should be 3 the women police officer not below the rank of a sub inspector a child victim shall as far as practicable be recorded by a women police officer not below the rank of an SI. So, 159 ka answer is 3. Alright. These 5 questions were from POKSO. Now, we are going next to CRPC. Let us see what we have in CRPC. So, we are starting with question number 34. I hope you appreciate that we are going to deal uh, with the questions like this in this video. And I have already told you the object, so do not be restless that if it is going to help you or not. The object of the video is to discuss with you the questions and see that slowly and steadily what they ask, how they ask, how they make the answers, actually how they make the options so that you understand that how you have to approach to that particular. The few will be very straightforward. For example, the last two questions we have seen has no problem. It is straightforward questions asked. Now, let us see uh, question number 34, set B, I have already told you. As per section 299 of the CRPC, witnesses for the prosecution be examined by the court in the absence of the accused where. Now, if you do not know the exact line, again, you are going to be confused. There is little scope of guessing in these kind of questions. Uh, when can uh, witnesses for the prosecution be examined in the absence of the accused? This you already know that it is a requirement of trial that all the witness will be examined. That means all evidence shall be taken in the presence of the accused. Correct. So, if this requirement is not fulfilled, it should not, it, it will not be considered as a fair trial. And because it will not be considered as a fair trial, the trial may be set aside by the appeal uh, from the accused. But there are uh, certain exceptions to it. So, the presence is required under section 273, but there is an exception under section 299 that you can take evidences in the absence of the accused if there is a situation in which the accused cannot be procured or cannot be summoned to the court. What is that is exactly written under section 299. Let us see that what the options are. The accused intimidates or threatens the witness for the prosecution in any manner. The accused is has guilty, held guilty of committing criminal contempt of the court. The accused seeks exemption from appearance in the matter and consents to recording of evidence of prosecution witnesses in his absence as well as absence of his counsel. Where the accused has absconded and there is no immediate prospect of arresting him. You tell me one thing. Accused intimidates or threatens the witnesses uh, for the prosecution in any manner. This kind of ground can never be made for the purpose of not allowing the accused to be standing in the trial because it will have a dire consequence. If the accused is intimidating, it is the responsibility of the court to protect the witness. I think there is one reference of uh, a case also in this particular uh, exam. In, in this exam, they have asked you about this case, although that case pertains to 2018. Uh, but they have asked you about that case about the witness protection scheme. So, witness protection is the responsibility of the police and the court together, mainly the court then the police uh, because the court will ask the police to give the security. But this cannot be the ground that the accused should not be present because 273 specifically requires the presence of the accused in the trial because all the examination has to happen before him so that he would know that what defense he has to take, what kind of evidences are coming against him. Otherwise, the concept of fair trial will suffer, will not suffice. Uh, the accused has guilty of committing criminal contempt also does not make any sense uh, because contempt of court if he has done, he could be punished for that, he could be, may, he could be prosecuted for that. 
but again free and fair trial if he is there he should, should be called accused seeks exemption from a parent such kind of exemption will again uh, deter the interest of justice where the accused has absconded and there is no immediate prospect of arresting him although i was telling you that what is wrong in 1 2 3 but we should not we even is not uh, we are not required to even go into this discussion because section 299 specifically states that where the accused has absconded and there is no immediate prospect of arresting him specifically is written there so the provision itself is giving you the the uh, the answer so if you know you will mark it correctly but sometimes if you don't know then you can always apply your mind in understanding that what option should be correct. It depends upon the understanding you have with respect to the concept which is behind the presence of the accused. That what all things can be allowed to him, what all not be allowed to him. 4 is the answer. Because 299 clearly states that if the accused has absconded and there is no immediate prospect of arresting him, then in that case you will not stay the trial you will not delay the trial you will start the trial by examining the witnesses so this is possible only on this ground otherwise it will be against the interest of justice so okay the next question only it is that i was talking about uh, the mahinder chawla versus union of india okay this this uh, case is now coming the witness protection scheme so uh, let's see the question the witness protection scheme 2018 approved by the Supreme Court of India in the case of Mahinder Chawla versus Union of India 2018 SSC online uh, this whatever is, is a scheme providing what that means it's a scheme scheme providing what so it is directly asking is a scheme is a scheme providing what that means out of this four there will be one point correct that means there will be one option correct which is related to the scheme that means if you do not know the scheme properly you tend to get confused in the options that is why i am saying that in these kind of kind of questions if you have not prepared it that well you will never be able to analyze or even to uh, put some principle or some mind behind uh, these questions so that you can attempt the answer properly it is tough for you to do that if you do not know the things correctly and in these kind of questions there is a scope of leaving the questions there is no problem in leaving the questions if you get that you are not to score 200 out of 200 you are not even to score 180 out of 200 you can score 160 170 and still can be way above than the cutoff way above so there is a scope that you can leave the questions because it's a negative the question the question paper is having negative mark so every wrong answer will also take you back and this i have already explained to you in the first video of djs when i am discussing about the notification of 2022 you can check the youtube channel clear so you can leave the question if you do not know you will be marking it incorrectly because you see the options options padhi ek bar providing for assessment of threat perception to life of a witness of his family members when you will read this you will see that oh this is correct this might be correct if you do not know you will find this point correct then providing for threat perception to be assessed by the io which is binding on the court you might get little confused that why the perception of the io will be binding but if it is the part of scheme it will be if it is a part of scheme it will be and because you don't know the scheme you don't know if it is correct or not so you will be confused, you will be marking wrong. And out of these four, only one is correct. Because it is asking about what the scheme provides for. That means if you are thinking this is also uh, looking okay, this is also looking okay, this, this will also look okay. Maybe this is also okay, the fourth point. So you will always be confused. And in, in these kind of confusions, when you are even 70-30, 80-20, attempting such kind of questions will always be at risk unless you actually marked it correct maybe the logic that you applied at that point of time uh, helped you but that is very rare providing for protection of witness in a trial punishable with imprisonment for a term not less than 10 years which may extend to imprisonment for life or death 
looks good what is the problem then does not provide for change of identity as also relocation of witness due to law and order being a state legislative subjects looks good all the options are looking good we are thinking that in witness protection scheme everything could come now the scheme is prepared by them it is approved by the supreme court we don't know actually the what what are the uh, factors involved in the scheme so if you do not know do not attempt such kind of questions but if you know just for your reference i am giving you the reference of the case that it is uh, page number 28 if you want to go where it is written then it is page number 28 uh, i am quoting this page uh, from the pdf that i have seen from the supreme court of india's website the pdf i have taken from there so it is page number 28 and para number 25 ठीक है एंड देन इन पैरा नंबर ट्वेंटी फाइव यू कम टू पार्ट टू एंड पॉइंट नंबर थ्री पार्ट टू पॉइंट नंबर थ्री एंड इन पॉइंट नंबर थ्री थ्री देर इज कैटेगरी ए वाई आई डिड सो कैटेगरी ए वाई आई डिड सो सो दैट यू इफ यू हैव एनी कंफ्यूजन विद रेस्पेक्ट टू दी आंसर यू कैन गो टू दैट जजमेंट go to the judgment to that particular address you can go to page number 28 uh, para number 25 actually para number 25 comes first because para number 25 is starting from page number 25 so page number 28 whatever the para number would be pay, go to page number 28 part 2.3 category a you will see that what it provides for it is specifically written that it provides for assessment of threat perception to the life of a witness or his family members during investigation trial or thereafter none of these things are there in the paragraph so it provides the scheme provides for this 35 ka one he hai and i would tell you if i would be remembering uh, the if i mean if i would have been there in the first go if you do not know i would have left it it is not compulsory to mark all the questions why i am saying so you would be asking we would be imagining that oh i don't know about this case why would i know about every case why would you know about every case if you have prepared it you may miss several things and be practical about this and be receptive that everyone is not uh, uh, is not cognizant with everything around mind it so if you don't know you leave it but you cannot leave everything mind it such kind of questions are totally depending upon your specific knowledge of the case so i have for to make it easy i have just given you the address so you can just go there and look that if the answer is correct or not then the next comes before proceeding to record the statement of an adult victim of sexual assault the magistrate is duty bound to ascertain from the io as to the nature of allegations and its truthfulness in the opinion of io now look at the nature of this question this question is nowhere referring to any provision is it is this question referring to any provision nowhere referring to any provision whatsoever not even in the options i could see that if there is any provision see these are two options here and two options here any indication as to what section is referred to not not at all see and look at the nature of the question the question is about before proceeding to record the statement of an adult victim before proceeding to record the statement of an adult victim of sexual assault victim of sexual assault that means it would always be a woman it will be a woman record the statement the magistrate that means magistrate is about to record a statement of a woman duty bound to ascertain from the io as to the nature of allegations and its truthfulness in the opinion of io again if you know you know this record of statement if is technically connecting to io this record of statement cannot be in trial why now you assess this is this is how the conceptual questions are made and nowhere i have seen such a quality of questions coming but delhi and this is how they actually becomes a little apart uh, from 
the other states. The manner in which you have to prepare for Delhi Judicial Services is not akin to or is not similar to the other states. That is why I asked you to make clusters. That if you are preparing for Delhi, you may prepare for Haryana, you may prepare for Punjab, for Himachal. Because they are alike but not even like this. They will ne they're not asking you questions like this. It is only DJS who is doing that. All praise to Delhi High Court. Because of the questions will be asked like this. The tendency of students apart from cramming but to also understand and analyze will increase and that will make you a uh, holistic, uh, that, that will be a holistic approach to become a judge, will make you a very competent uh, member of judicial services, which in my opinion, I really like these kind of questions, but every state has their own patterns. Before proceeding to record the statement of an adult victim of sexual assault, victim of sexual assault, women, we will see that if women this fact that it is a woman is of any value to us or not. The magistrate is duty bound to ascertain from the IO. If the, the term IO is used here, investigating officer is used here, that means you are talking about still the stage of investigation because the help of IO or the presence of IO is nowhere required once cognizance is taken. Once cognizance is taken, Nowhere it is required that I.O. should be there for any aid of the judiciary or for any aid of the judge. He is only required till investigation. That means what kind of statement would be recorded here and I.O. is mentioned, the statement would be of 164. That means a magistrate records, because during investigation, the only requirement of the magistrate is to record any statement under 164. Otherwise, Police is recording the statement under 161 and when police is recording the statement, what is the value of magistrate there? What is the role of uh, magistrate there? So if magistrate is recording and IO is mentioned, that means magistrate is recording the statement under 164. Now you start looking towards section 164 and the concepts involved in it. Now you read the question. Once you are through with it, once you know where you have to put to your mind because in this question there is no indication of the section that which section it pertains to where do I apply my mind and magistrate also record the statement of a victim while in that while he is in trial but then IO will not be of any use so that is why it is a record of statement under 164 let's see what are the uh, what are the uh, factors here let's see what they do they want because they have given you an assertion the assertion is that before proceeding to record the statement of a victim under 164, the magistrate is duty bound. That means magistrate is bound to ascertain from IO as to nature of allegation and truthfulness in the opinion of IO. Magistrate is never bound by anyone's opinion. This is the first thing that you must remember. In the whole CRPC, the magistrate is not bound by anyone's opinion. The magistrate is only bound by the directions or the orders given by his superior that means in appeal by the say, session court or by the high court that's it otherwise magistrate is not bound by anyone and by investigating officer never ever never ever that can happen because the judicial mind is uh, incumbent in a judicial officer i is not a judicial officer and nowhere superior and nowhere in the position that he can ordain uh, the magistrate so magistrate can never be duty bound this I understood by reading the statement but now let's see that which option would be correct statement is not correct it's right statement is not correct but let's see but let's see statement is not correct and the magistrate should hear the PP APP as well as support person or legal aid counsel before proceeding to record the statement statement is not correct this is true statement is not correct but then they have put a condition that it is not correct because magistrate should hear pp app as well as support person legal aid counsel if you practically know this and if you have seen the entire section no way there is a requirement of this section 164 does not provide for this requirement section 164 does not even say this but then we have to understand the concept 
statement is not correct this is also true statement is not correct so both are giving me a good indication since the magistrate is under a legal duty to ascertain the version of incident in the words of the victim of crime and record her statement after satisfying that she has not been tutored or under any kind of threat undue influence or coercion from any more i am totally convinced with this statement because this is the concept of section 164 that before the magistrate starts recording the statement of a victim under section 164 the magistrate is duty bound to only ascertain one thing that she is doing it voluntarily and that is why the magistrate also verifies at the bottom of the statement once the statement is taken at the bottom they verify that i have asked her of the questions to know of her veracity the truthfulness that means that if she is voluntarily giving or not the truthfulness of the fact that she is voluntarily giving the statement once the magistrate is satisfied that she is voluntarily giving the statement there is no reason for anyone else to even intervene there is no reason why io is coming into the picture once the magistrate satisfies of this fact the next thing is that whatever she is saying verbatim they have to write it verbatim as in whatever she is saying in that language using that particular uh, intent that with which she is speaking the magistrate has to write that the magistrate cannot tutor her the magistrate cannot write the paragraph in her language or in her way because she is not one to explain tomorrow it will be used against her she, uh, the victim is the one to explain all that then it will be read over to the victim and the victim will be say yes yes you have written it correctly and then there will be a verification at the bottom so this is very convincing this point but let's see maybe there is another point which is more convincing so let's see statement is correct it starts with statement is correct so this point will never suffice it will never uh, survive statement is correct again it will never correct survive that means out of those two this statement is wrong this is right 36 2 is the answer beautiful question and what an answer so if you could identify all these things now many of the students aspirants who do not know the concept or do not know this way of attempting the questions or are not in habit of doing it will waste not less than 5 to 10 minutes in only doing this question and these are the questions that you must value reading while you are giving those 15 minutes because they will take your time and those who are in habit of doing this they will take not less than 3 to 4 minutes so you are saving time marking correctly it is clear next under which provision of law the accused person is entitled to default bail on account of non completion of investigation within stipulated period anyone could mark this that is section 167 which is talking about compulsory bail or default bail because the investigation is not completed within 60 or 90 days as the case may be ye to kuch bhi nahi tha this is a factual question straight forward question then uh, we coming to section 75 then we'll see that they have jumped from uh, section 38 to uh, directly 75 let's see what it says section 437 137 you understand is talking about the grant of bail in non bailable offenses puts fetters fetters means restrictions fetters on the powers of magistrate to grant bail to any accused person arrested in a non bailable offense when there appears reasonable ground for believing that he has been guilty of an offense punishable with death or imprisonment for life but the first proviso there to carve exception that means they are talking about the reading of section 437 first and then the proviso the first proviso there are two carves exception and provides that such accused can be released on bail if he is such person is under the age of 16 a woman sick or infirm i think everyone knows about this all the three are present there if you read the first proviso to section 437 1 you will see that the exception to it is having these three factors that is under 16 age women sick or infirm all these three are there so four is your answer this is also a very easy and straightforward question no analysis
any court may alter or add to any charge at any time before. I think everyone knows that all these sections you anyhow cram and recall. It is talking about section 216 CRPC where a court may alter or add to any charge uh, before the prosecution evidence, recording of statement, defense evidence is closed, judgment is pronounced. It is clearly written before judgment is pronounced. Straightforward question, no need to analyze anything. If you know, you know. Clear? So, a court may add or alter to the charge before the judgment is pronounced. This is a very general thing, no discussion required. When a person is charged with an offence and facts are proved which reduce it to a minor offence, he will be acquitted of both the charged offence, aisa to ho sakta, he will be acquitted, this will never happen, that he will be acquitted of both, because uh, if it is proved that he has done a minor offence, for example, he is charged with 302, but it is reduced through 325, that means uh, grave assert. So, he was charged with murder, but it is proved that he has committed grave assault. Why would you acquit him? You will convict him at least for grave assault. This is general logic. And also, section 222 bracket 2. Section 222 bracket 2 clearly mentions that he will be convicted of the minor offence, no problem. He will be tried afresh. He will not be tried afresh. For minor offence, he will not be tried afresh. The trial has happened. It is proved that he has committed grave assault, although he was charged with murder. Does not matter. You convict him for murder. Where it is written? He may be convicted of minor offence. It is true. What you karenge? None of the above. Why? This is true. Very straightforward. This also is very simple. Then, when does the trial of an offence commence? See, you know the stages of crime. First of all, what happens is FIR. Then what happens is charge sheet, police report, police report, on police report that court take cognizance. Now there is a possibility that after taking cognizance and after 207, uh, when, when, uh, when, the, when the issue process will happen and, the, and after you give the supply the documents to the accused, after 207, 208, uh, there will be a stage of hearing upon charge. And in hearing upon charge, there may happen a discharge. So that means if there is a discharge, no trial is commencing, no trial required. That means trial begins only when there is charge framing. Charge framing ke time pe hi trial ho sakta hai. Ya kuch likha hai kya? When charge sheet is filed, charge sheet means police report. Yaha pe to trial shuru nahi ho ra because after that there is the stage of cognizance, issue process. 207, 208 and then hearing on charge. So, this is not correct. When charge are framed, wo to humne nikali liya. Aur kuch hai kya? when cognizance is taken, cognizance is taken, it is not uh, the commencement of trial because we are still waiting towards this particular position because someone can be discharged there. And if the person, if the accused is discharged, no trial happens on, on him. If someone is discharged, there is no trial on him. But there is an issue process, but there is a supply of documents to him. So, that means this inquiry period will certainly happen and trial is not beginning for him because he is discharged. That means charge framing is that stage where trial begins. Cognizance is inquired, the commencement of inquiry stage and PR is where it is termination of investigation only. So, you understand this? Okay, I will just be it. All right. Second in your answer. It was straightforward question. And if you know, you know. That means, you know that this is where it is. A court may impound a document under the following provision of law. This is completely a factual question. This is what I was asking. That they will ask you that in which section it is or this is given in which section. This is the, uh, the rare, uh, the, uh, not rare, but this is raw factual question. Not rare, <laughs> raw factual question. So, uh, which section? It is section 104. Section 104 talks about the impounding of a document uh, by the courts in CRPC. Straightforward question. Koi zarurat nahi iske lava. Kuch dhyan mein ki. Next. After the police report is filed under section 173, who can order further, further investigation? Uh, after the police report is filed, 173 police report 
filed who can order further investigation now there is a take on this that uh, what what will happen now let's see why i am actually now uh, this will come into your mind that uh, what is the problem you go and read section 17388 go and read section 17388 the police officer itself the io if he wants that he wants to further investigate he can go ahead and investigate further no problem further investigation can be done suomoto by further investigation can be done suomoto by io and can be ordered by magistrate c can be done suomoto by the io or can be ordered by the magistrate in this there is a general practice that it can also be ordered by a police chief but we are not concerned with that here i just read section 1738 for you and you will be uh, more confident towards the understanding 1738 says nothing in this section shall deem to preclude further investigation in respect of an offence after a report under subsection 2 has been forwarded to the magistrate and where upon such investigation the officer in charge of police station obtains further evidence oral or documentary he shall forward to the magistrate a further report that means an additional charge sheet if we go by the language of section 1738 you would say that it is officer in charge of police station because here i am writing suomoto by io generally it happens suomoto by io but io gets instruction from the sho only sho means the officer in charge of police station officer in charge bol dijiye sho bol dijiye so bol dijiye ki baat hai thana prabhari thana in charge whatever it is all are same the one who is the head of any particular police station is known as the officer in charge of the police station or by several other names what so you see here i am writing suomoto by io but indirectly it is referring to officer in charge only because it is the uh, officer in charge of the police station that instructs the other persons to investigate upon a case because he himself cannot take all the cases so he instructs the other who becomes an investigating officer so he does it implies that station house officer would be wanting him to do that in delhi we call them station house officers shos in up you call them sos station officer clear in certain places you call them ti thana in charge so much so so far clear sometimes while you are doing an investigation and forwarded the uh, copy then io can also do under the instructions of police chief sometimes this happens this is very practical what i am saying you here is practical it is nowhere written in the uh crpc in crpc section 1738 does mention officer in charge which is again suomoto by io means this only by sho and police chief is not our concern because police chief even if is instructing police chief will instruct the officer in charge that you investigate further because this is a high profile matter or whatsoever then he will ask io to do that that means it is under the category of suomoto only it is not under the category of special order now section 173 nowhere states nowhere that magistrate may order further investigation after the filing of the charge sheet even section 1563 does not say states that section 1563 says what section 1563 is generally believed to only give a direction of filing an fir that means you go and record and file an fir 
under 1563 you give an application to the magistrate that the magistrate orders the police to file an FIR, isn't it? And then there is supervisory jurisdiction also. The magistrate also monitors the, the uh, investigation. That's it. And then the question is after the police report is filed in the section 173 CRPC, who can order Suomoto by IO or the SHO whatsoever or the police chief? It is not an order to further investigate. This does not come into order. So the answer can never be officer in charge of police station. It can also not be district police chief. The only option remaining is magistrate concerned and then none of the above. That means it could be either of these two. So we are talking about these two. These two options are subsided. What remains? What remains is this. Magistrate considered none of the above. Now, if you see section 173 does not indicate so and 156.3 does not indicate so, but there is a case. It was a case which directly dealt with this power of the magistrate. In short, known as Vinu Bhai's case, just authored by Justice Royanton Nariman. Justice Nariman very elaborately discussed about the powers of the magistrate under 156.3 vis-a-vis section 173.8 and say that there is no provision that can restrict the magistrate to order further investigation after the filing of charge sheet. The answer is 3. It is based upon what it is based upon? It is based upon a case. So, if you would have read it, even the ratio somewhere, you would have got the option. So, 173 may who can order? It is the magistrate. They does, does not come because they are not ordering. Unka to ye ilaka hai. They are doing it for themselves. Unka to ye ilaka hai na. Ye thodi order kar rahe. They have this power anyhow under 173.8. But who can order is magistrate. They are talking about magistrate here. I hope you understand this. What is the effect of compounding of the offence under section 320 CRPC? Everyone knows about this fact. They are talking about section 328. I have given, I am giving you the addresses so that you can go and check yourself. Section 320 sub bracket, uh, the subsection 8 bracket 8 is saying that the accused is deemed acquitted of the offence. Accused, acquit ho jata hai. 2 is your answer. Then, under what provision can a person not being an accused be summoned to stand trial along with the accused? When during the course of an inquiry into or trial of an offence, it appears from the evidence that such person has committed an offence. Every one of you knows about this particular section that there is a section in which a person who is not an accused so far, if in trial it comes out to be a fact that someone is also, someone else is also involved in it, you may call that person and can ask him to join the trial. That can only happen under section 319. 3 is your answer. It is very straightforward question. Only just asked you in a way that they are not asking you directly that about the language. They are only asking you that when can an accused be asked to join the trial if he was not accused before that. 319. In a case where the offender is not traced or identified, but the victim is identified and where no trial takes place, the victim or his dependents cannot make an application to the state or the DLSA for award of compensation. Now for this it is important that you must know the sections that are dealing with victim compensation scheme. If you know about the victim compensation scheme, you can very well take care of these uh, questions. Uh, if you read victim compensation scheme section 357A, it was introduced in 2009, section 357A and if you see directly clause number 4, 357A4 to be more precise about the address. You can go and check it. 
357.4. You will go and see that it actually enables them. So, यहाँ पे लिखा है statement is correct. यहाँ पर लिखा है statement is correct. यहाँ लिखा है statement is not correct. Makes sense. The victim can see ski seek ex gratia. Uh, here it is written the statement is not correct since section 357A4 of the uh, CRPC enables the victim to seek compensation on such situations, which is correct. So it is a straightforward question, need no explanation. 3 is your answer. Clear? So far, you just have to read section 357A and you will see that the statement is wrong. So statement is correct, wala portion bilkul sahi tha, and it is giving you the correct explanation also. Then a victim of sexual assault committed in a neighboring state escapes to Delhi and reports the matter to the police. Indicates me that uh, it is talking about zero FIR. A victim of sexual assault commit, committed in a neighboring state escapes to Delhi and reports the matter to the police. That means if someone has committed sexual assault, uh, so someone has been the victim of sexual assault in Haryana goes to Delhi and there coming in Mukherjee Nagar Thane aaye aur maha par FIR karwa di. Now if you go by section 177 it says that cognizance can all only be taken by who? By the one having jurisdiction. Second thing you have to understand here is that where can an FIR be uh, lodged? Where you can file an FIR? Kaha aap pratham suchna दे सकते हैं किसी भी अपराध के घट घटना की किसी भी अपराध के घटित होने की where you can go there is a whole lot of concept behind it although section 154 is not dealing with it particularly it is not dealing with it specifically not mentioning where you can file an FIR it is only asking about the report but you can file the report anywhere you want anywhere irrespective of the cause of action that means where it has been committed Let's see what it says and report the matter to the police. The local police refuses to register the FIR, they can't. An application is moved before the MM for direction to the police to register the FIR. MM to direct the registering of the FIR. That means you have Mukherjee Nagar Thane ka jo concerned magistrate hoga, uske paas 156.3 ki application leke gaye. Aur vaha par bol rahe ho ki dekhiye, ye police wale hamara record nahi kar rahe FIR. पुलिस वाले आके क्या बोल रहे जब पूछा उनसे स्टेटस रिपोर्ट मंगवाई कि पता होवे क्या है क्या हुआ तो ही दे आर सेइंग दैट ये हमारे जुडिशन में नहीं आता सर देन कम्स द लॉ ऑल्दो इट इज नॉट रिटन एनीवेयर इन द सीआरपीसी बट द लॉ इज वेरी मच क्लियर इन सेवरल सेवरल सुप्रीम कोर्ट जजमेंट्स दैट देयर इज अ कांसेप्ट कॉल्ड जीरो एफआईआर व्हिच इज नॉट मेंशनड इन सीआरपीसी नॉट स्पेसिफिकली गिवन बट इफ यू वुड हैव रीड अबाउट इट you could understand this whole question and the answer. Zero FIR can be filed by any police station anywhere in this country. Wherever the commission would have happened doesn't matter. And if they are refusing to do so, on the refusal of filing the FIR, section 156.3 gives the power to the magistrate to ask them to record FIR. And then the procedure is that once the FIR is recorded, then the police station will send it to the concerned police station. That means where the offense has happened, where the jurisdiction lies. Victim's responsibility is over once he gives the information to any police station whatsoever. Let's see then. Is it given? The magistrate can direct the local police to register 0 FIR under section 163 CRPC, investigate and file final report under section 173.2. Looks like a little uh deviated from the law let's see the mm cannot pass any direction as all crimes are local as per section 177 and 178 this does not look like law the magistrate in delhi can direct the local police of neighboring state where the offense is alleged to have been committed to register the fir investigate and file a report before him this also does not look like law because a magistrate has power only over his own jurisdiction the thanas that he has been given, he has no jurisdiction to direct orders to any other police station which is not under his authority. If I am the uh, magistrate of Mukherjee Nagar Thana, I cannot direct Karol Bagh Thana to do something. Whatever is under my jurisdiction, I can only direct them. They are the one to 
take my orders. So this also does not look like good. The Metropolitan Magistrate can direct the police to register a zero FIR in the local police station, but the police thereafter has to forward the FIR to Superintendent of Police concerned of the neighboring state for further investigation as per law. Yehi to law hai. Four is your answer. This is better than the before. The magistrate can direct, yaha bhi likha hai, can direct local police, but what they have said afterwards is not palatable to the understanding. Investigate and file report. They will not investigate. They will send it to that particular place where the in, in incident happened. Why? Because the evidences are there. It is easier for them to locate the evidences and to construct the whole crime scene and then to proceed as per section 161, 160 whatsoever. This does not look like good statement in comparison to the fourth. So what is your answer? Four is your answer, triple one. Here, thoda dimag lagana pad aapko. Because nothing is mentioned in CRPC, you have to analyze the concept and then you have to give the answer. I hope you get this. Section 162 of CRPC proves that the statement made by a person to a police officer during investigation and reduced to writing shall be signed by the person making the statement. Everyone knows about the fact. If it is reduced in writing, it shall not be signed by the person making it. Shall not be signed. Shall not be signed. Yaha to likha hai, shall be signed. Galat ho gaya. The statement made by a person to a police officer during investigation and reduced to writing may not be signed by the person making the statement. May not likha hua hai. You have to remember the word is shall not. Shall not be signed. To ye bhi galat ho gaya. May nahi hai. Shall hai. No statement made by a person to a police officer during investigation and reduced to writing shall be signed by a person making the statement. Ye looks like correct. But let's see. Kya pata agla isse bhi achha ho kuch? Statement made by a person to a police officer during investigation and reduced to writing shall be signed by a person making the statement only if the police officer has obtained prior permission. Aisa kuch likha hai nahi na. It shall not be signed. That means 3 is your answer. If you remember the correct preposition, you will mark it perfectly. Is this clear? Then come the next. Very good blend of questions have been asked. I am totally impressed with the way that the questions have been set. Where the police submits a final closure because the question, question paper is not all about checking your memory, how sharp you are. It is also about checking your analysis, how, un, how uh, you have comprehend, how, how you comprehend the law, how you have inculcated those concepts into you, how much dedicated you are to enter into the profession, how much information is there in your mind and how much ingrained you are, matlab kitna dhal chuke hain aap usme, kitna ram chuke hain aap is profession mein, wo bhi to check karna hai na, tabhi to aap hamare liye capable ban paayenge, very good. Where the police submits a final closure report under section 173, final closure report means aapne FR submit kar di, FR means, uh, final report means, FR is known as final report, final closure report, closure apne aap bata hai. closure means that the police uh, investigating officer opines that no offense has been committed according to them. Uh, that no incriminating material could be unearthed during the investigation against the accused, the magistrate is, ye to bahut simple hai, ye kya poochega, bound hai ki nahi, bilkul bound nahi hai, magistrate is not bound at all, but let's see how they have written it, let's see. Magistrate is bound by the conclusion, ye to ho hi nahi sakta. not bound, ye wala dekhte not bound by conclusion drawn by police and may direct further investigation without hearing the accused or the complaint. Let's see, bound by the conclusion, ye to ho hi nahi sakta. not bound, phir a gaya, iska matlab in dono mein confusion hogi hume. Let's see, not bound by the conclusions drawn, but may issue notice to the accused to show cause why he should be tried as per the procedure prescribed by law. When he is not bound, why he will send a show cause that why he should not be tried? Such kind of thing never happen in procedure. Criminal procedure does not mention any of these things that you show cause, give show cause to the accused asking him why he should not be tried. This will happen only at the stage of charge framing. And right now you have just given a FR, that means you have just filed a police report. And I have told you that six sequence. On police report, you either take cognizance or you do not take cognizance. 
if you if you take cognizance of offense because cognizance is always taken of offense if you take cognizance of offense only then you proceed for the offender why you calling the offender right now when you are not taking cognizance just decide if you are taking cognizance or not that means you are not bound and if you are not bound this is correct that may direct investigation without hearing the accused or the complainant further investigation direct kar sakta hai because it is under section 1563 only that i am not bound by your conclusion go and investigate further and then come to me again police wala you go ayo go and do further investigations i am not taking cognizance right now i am not even denying that means i am not accepting your fr but i am asking you go and do further investigation this is very common this is a common practice two is correct this is the perfect preposition of law as simple as that which of the following section deals with evidence of prosecution now if again if you know you know if you do not know uh, which section then you will never be able to attempt it properly it is uh, section 242 in which the short title itself is uh, stating evidence of prosecution no other section is giving any such provision but section 242 so one is your answer the next there are 30 questions from crpc 25 from ipc an individual is facing charges under section 376 ipc and section 302 ipc he avoided police arrest okay later he surrendered to a magistrate before whom neither report under section 157 1 crpc nor copies of entries in the police diary were filed who remanded him to judicial custody can such person claim default bail after 90 days if no police report is filed now in such kind of questions what do you think they would be giving you the straight forward answers in the provision if that was the case they would never have asked you like this no straight forward answers can be taken from them you have to now start applying your mind what mind will you apply you will see that if in section 167 any of this thing is written any of such thing why i am talking about 167 why i am talking about 167 crpc because section 167 crpc talks about the concept of default bail they are mentioning who remanded can such person claim default bail that means default bail is connected to section 167 crpc in 167 crpc none of these things exist they are only saying that if the investigation is not completed within 60 or 90 days kindly release them as the case may be kindly release them okay but if we read section 167 it talks about arrest and detention if i read for you if i just quickly read whenever any person is arrested and detained in custody and it appears that the investigation cannot be completed within the period of 24 hours he has to be taken before a magistrate who must remand him to police custody or send him to judicial custody but what it says whenever any person is arrested and detained arrested and detained because when he will be arrested and the police has detained uh, detained him within 24 hours he will have to be brought before the magistrate there the magistrate will look upon the case diary they are mentioning this neither report under section 157 1 that means occurrence report no occurrence report has been shown nor the copies of entries in the police diary that means no general diary police diary or case diary has been shown this is general procedure i'm telling you practically what happens in remand whenever the accused is arrested the first thing you do is to take him to the concerned magistrate that magistrate will see two things primarily first is the occurrence report that is the copy of the fir or what information you have got that you have arrested him at what behest you have arrested the magistrate will see that because it should not be an illegal detention and the second thing that the court will see is 
the police diary that what all actions you have taken so far. None of that happened here. And then what happened? That once the court is satisfied, when the magistrate is returning, the court is satisfied that yes, an information has come and police diary also mentions his arrest timely and he has been brought within 24 hours because with police diary, with memo of arrest, you will see the time of arrest that he has been arrested uh, timely and he has been brought to me timely. Now the magistrate will decide that if he has to be given back to the police, police custody or it should be sent to the jail, judicial custody. There is when they decide, when the magistrate decides. And from that date of custody, from the date the magistrate is ordering him to go to the custody, the investigation need to be finished within 60 days or 90 days. If that does not happen, the concept of default bail comes into picture. Now you look at this question. He says that no occurrence report shows. No occurrence report shown. That means kya FIR, FIR dikhao, kya hai? No copies of entries to the police diary were filed. But they say who remanded him to judicial custody? Ye nahi hua. That means those two things never happened. But he was remanded to judicial custody. Although we don't uh, say remanded, here it is sent to judicial custody because remand is to police custody only. Care, we are not getting into all those things. Remanded him to judicial custody. That means even the magistrate was cognizant of the fact that no occurrence report or police entries are shown and he surrendered to the magistrate. Magistrate sent him to custody. That means he is in custody. And section 167 is for the protection of a person who is in custody and the investigation is not completing within the stipulated time. Section 167 is not restricted only to the case of arrest and detention. It is talking about because that term arrest and detention is used when he is arrested and detained. He must be brought before the magistrate. But if he comes before the magistrate and is sent into just custody, the main point here is custody. Are getting the point? So, section 167 is not restricted only to the case of arrest and detention. The object of section 167 is to give anyone who is in custody a right of being released on bail if the investigation does not complete in 60 or 90 days as the case may be since the day he was sent into custody. Because even in arrest and detention, when he is brought before the magistrate, the magistrate sends him to custody. From there you calculate 60 days and 90 days. Same is what is happening here. And because he is remanded to judicial custody, he is in custody. The factum of custody is main here. That he is in custody and after 90 days he asks for default bail. Can it be given to you? Can such person claim default bail after 90 days if no police report is filed? Yes, why not? What? Here's your answer. Is this clear? So, one is your answer. It has been deliberated in Supreme Court judgment, so don't worry. That is what should be your take. Magistrate under section 239 CRPC can frame charge against the accused, discharge accused if charges are groundless, open trial for evidence, convict the accused if the accused pleads guilty. Now, this is again a very factual question under 239. Uh, 239 CRPC talks about the discharge of the accused. So, 239 is talking about discharge, 240 is talking about the charge framing. So, 2 is your answer. This is something very straightforward, factual. You must remember from the trial, several questions 
in the types of trial video i have told you that all the sections are important for preliminary see the questions are coming directly then comes section 91 of crpc enables the court or the officer in charge of a police station to summon such document or other thing necessary or desirable for the purposes of any investigation inquiry trial or other proceedings this provision also enables the accused to move an application for production or preservation of documents so as to assist him in his defense at the time of consideration of charge against him or recording of statement under section 313 crpc statement is very crucial because section 91 is one an area of conflict always and of debate that under section 91 who all are having the power to uh, ask the court to summon the document now you would have read about one thing very clearly under section 91 there is a supreme court case also which is talking about the fact that it cannot be used against the accused because it will then uh, not lead to fair trial or it will be travesty of justice because you will be uh, asking him to produce the documents that he will be using for his defense so you will be weakening his defense so it will not be used against the accused however it does not restrict the accused to file an application before the court it does not restrict the accused to file an application before the court so that there are certain documents that can be used by him to help him in discharge this is furthering the ends of justice this is not the travesty this is not lowering the ends it is furthering the ends of justice that you are helping the accused to get some documents so that he could prepare his defense properly so that it will help him to dis to get discharged or when he is putting his defense or jab tis tarah ki examination ho rahi hogi matlab whenever he is being examined he can use that so it never nowhere restricts section 91 nowhere restricts ye concept kahan se aaya sab cases mein discuss hote hain needless to mention the exact case because these are uh dealt in piece meals in different different cases then you have to collect them together and make a concept i'm just giving you the crux 313 crpc getting the point so uh okay not connecting it section 91 can be invoked by accused that he can use it in 313 crpc or at the time of uh consideration of charge against i'll get in this point now let's see what it says statement is wrong now statement is not wrong statement is correct yes if the court is satisfied that the material available with the investigator not made part of the charge sheet has a crucial bearing on the issue of framing of charge if the document is crucial then you must help the accused out to get that document if the in io is not giving that document in the charge sheet when the charge sheet is filed all the documents have to be appended if it is not given uh the io will not uh, the io will be asked to give it accused will put an application is it allowed statement to theek lag raha hai but let's read further statement is correct ab dekho ye bhi aa gaya na the court cannot pass orders to preserve certain records even if the same would be destroyed in the ordinary course of business does not make any sense statement is correct since in the absence of specific powers the court does not have any inherent power to do pass orders ex debito justiciae not making any point that means two is your answer 139 ka two statement is correct and if it is having any bearing upon the charge then it can be called then comes the next leg of questions in crpc ordinarily the duration of anticipatory bill granted to an accused under section 438 crpc sabko pata hai to number of cases have reiterated number of times starting from gurbak singh sibya that the if once anticipatory bill is granted it is granted till the end of the trial hai kahin likha 
uh, operate till the accused is summoned operate without any restriction as to the time and can also continue till the end of trial. Yahi hai ji, answer 4. 4 is your answer. Any person aggrieved by a refusal on the part of an officer in charge of a police station to record the FIR relating to the commission of a cognizable offence may send the substance of such information to you know, sab koi pata hai. 156 uh, 3 mein likha hua hai, I, I hope 150 sorry 150 uh, 154 3 not 156 3 1543 talks about the giving of the information if the uh, FIR is not filed by the police officer, the SHO, officer in charge, then you go to SP. Jalika concerned superintendent. 4 is the answer. What next? As per the decision of the Supreme Court in Lalita Kumari versus government of UP, Preliminary inquiry may be made before registration of FIR in the following category of cases. This you can only know if you have read Lalita Kumari's case. Preliminary inquiry can be done. Seven days time is given to you. The court does not deny it. And the court has given some illustrations, not fixed categories, but illustrations that in these categories, for example, P can be done. Preliminary inquiry can be done. Kaun se wo cases hain? Uh, matrimonial disputes, commercial offense, medical ne negligence case and uh, preliminary inquiry may be made before registration of uh, FIR in the following category of cases. Uh, the fourth I think is repeated so that is why I am sorry for the slide. Because 2 is also commercial offence, 4 is also commercial offence. This is not commercial offence. This is all of the above. All of the above. This option is all of the above. And if you go to para 111 of judgment, para triple 1 of the judgment, point number 6, Para triple one of the judgment, Lalita Kumari's judgment, again from the Supreme Court of India's website, I have taken the PDF. Para triple one of the judgment, point number six, if you go to that, you will see that all these cases are given there. So, all of the above is your answer. Matrimonial, commercial, medical negligence cases, you can do PE. There are two more cases given there. One is corruption. Corruption cases may be a PE kar sakte hai. Corruption cases and cases of delay in filing FIR. Cases of delay in filing FIR. Okay. In, in these two cases also you can do that. But they are illustrative. Matlab only for example. It does not exhaust. Ye hi hai, aur bhi bana sakte hai aap. It depends. Clear? Para triple one or point number six. Pe ja ke aap dekh sakte hai, all of the above. When the court of sessions passes a sentence of death, the sentence can be executed only after one month, cannot be executed unless confirmed by high court. Yes, it cannot be executed unless confirmed by high court. Bilkul sahi hai. Aage dekhte hai vaise. Can be executed only after one year, Aisa bhi kuch nahi. can be executed unless confirmed by the Supreme Court. No, Supreme Court nahi. High Court ki confirmation chahi. Clear? Next. Achha, aisa likha kaha par hai? This also I tell you. Uh, this is section 28 to. Section 28. Subsection 2. You can go to that. Against the order passed by the court acquitting the accused, the following can prefer an appeal. If there is an acquittal of the accused, uh, the public prosecutor, yes, the victim also can, yes. Uh, the public prosecutor under section 378, if I am not wrong, yes. Section 378, the public prosecutor on direction of district magistrate or state government, it is written under section 378. Victim is written under section 374, uh, 372 proviso. 
372 proviso it was added in 2009 proviso was added in 2009 so it is both both 1 and 2 3 is your answer which one of the following orders can be passed after the conclusion of trial only an order no not only acquittal only an order of conviction no either an order of acquittal or conviction yes order of discharge to discharge to hoin circa 4 4 is your answer and it is stated in the several section section uh, 235 255 248 all states that a uh, judgment can be either conviction or acquittal clear we are about to just get over with crpc x was acquitted by the trial However, an appeal filed by the state, the High Court reversed the order of acquittal, convicted him and sentenced him to imprisonment for a term of 10 years. The remedy available to X will be, it is obvious, hai, although you need not read any particular provision unto it, although there is a provision which, uh, which is stating about it, that is section 379, if you can read it. Section 379 talks about this particular situation where the imprisonment is given in, uh, above 10 years, 10 or more and uh, or life imprisonment or death, then in that case the appeal will go directly to Supreme Court. If trial court acquitted, high court convicted and high court convicted uh, for the uh, for the offense and given the imprisonment for a term 10 years or more or death or life then section 379 says that the appeal will go directly to Supreme Court. One is your answer. Next. Proclamation for person absconding is issued. Everyone knows. Uh, 82 is proclamation, 83 is attachment. Two is your answer. This is completely factual. Is me kya hai? Every offense shall ordinarily be inquired and tried by a court section 177 says that it should be inquired and tried by a court uh, where the offense was committed Ye to section 177 directly he bol raha hai to one is your answer again a straightforward question any other crpc questions remaining uh, i think we are done with crpc questions so these were the answers of your crpc questions let's see now comes the uh, yes, the IPC starts. Question number 18. Which of the following is the punishment for counterfeiting an Indian coin? So, there is a difference between counterfeiting a coin and a counterfeiting an Indian coin. Ye dhyan uh, aur dono ke, uh, punishments mein fark bhi hai. So, let's see. Uh, this is section 232. You can go and check section 232 of IPC. IPC starts from here. Yaan se IPC shuru ho raha. Set B. Question number 18. So, section 232 mein uh, 10 sals or fine ki sada di gai hai. 3. Punishment. Thik hai. Is mato kya hai? A thief breaks into a house, hold the owner of the house at gunpoint and ties him up. He takes money and jewelry from a cupboard and escapes. The act amount to, dekhye, thief breaks into a house. Breaks into a house, hold the owner of the house at gunpoint and ties him up. He takes the money. I uh, have already recorded a particular uh, video with respect to the difference between extortion and theft. If you would see there, the difference between extortion and theft is one is taking and the other is giving. No one is giving anything to him. He is taking money. Taking is theft. And in theft, because he has used instant fear, it will be coming under robbery. So that will be theft amounting to robbery. Two is your answer. Clear? Then a peon clandestinely, this is clandestinely, takes an office file from the office of chief engineer of the public work department and gives it to a private party. See, they are not asking anything very directly from the theft. But they are making a situation and asking you to apply your mind. 
and gives it to a private party, he puts it back in its place the next day. Has the person committed the offense of theft? theft. This is uh, based on the case Pyare Lal Bhargava, in which it is said that even if for a small time that you take, once there is a moving toward taking the theft, theft has been committed, sorry. So the offense is committed, offense is theft is committed as the file was taken with dishonest intent without consent. Three is your answer. Because here par likha hai no offense, offense to hua hai. Here likha hai no offense, offense to hua hai. Here likha hai no offense, offense to hua hai. So the offense of theft is committed. Three ni bachta hai. Three is your answer. Pyare Lal Bhagat ka case par dependent hai ye pura case. Creating a false document amounts to forgery only when there is an intent to cause injury to public. There is an intent to commit fraud on a person. There is an intent to cause a person to enter into an implied agreement. If you go by this, uh, the language of section 463, which talks about the uh, offense of forgery, you would see that all the three content is present. So the answer would be 4. Clear? A person enters another's house without seeking permission, which is criminal trespass. He has committed house trespass if he entered with an intention to commit an offence. He entered with an intention to annoy or insult the residents. He entered with an intention to intimidate the residents. I hope that all of them suffice because if you will see uh, uh, section 442 and 441, you will understand. This is the combined reading of section 441 and 442. Combined reading of section 441 and 442, criminal trespass and housebreaking, you will understand all the three suffice. Four is your answer. Three ingredient hai. To ye aapka answer banega. A married woman gives birth to an illegitimate child. To escape from societal shame, she leaves the child outside the gates of an orphanage. Has the mother committed an offence? Yes. If you go towards the offence against Brody and you will see the... Uh, provisions related to the miscarriage and offence with respect to child. Uh, you will see that abandonment of child is also an offence which is given under section 370. Section 317. She has committed the offence of abandonment of child. Abandonment of child is not punishable. Punishable hai. Abandonment of child is punishable offence only for legitimate children. Aisa nahi hai. Abandonment of child is not punishable offence. Ye bhi nahi hai. First is the answer. One is your answer. Question number 23. Dishonestly receiving or retaining any stolen property, knowing or having reason to believe the same to be stolen is punishable under. Uh, stolen property, if I am not wrong, is given under mm, just a moment. This is question number. Uh, give me a moment, please. 133. I think it's 4, 410 if I am not wrong. Uh, 411, sorry. I am sorry. 411. Yes. It's a matter of fact. 4 is your answer. Okay, 4 is your answer. Next. Section 303 of IPC which provide that whoever sentenced to imprisonment for life commits murder shall be sentenced to death was struck down by Supreme Court. So everyone knows me too Singh versus state of Punjab. You do not have to even have to apply anything. You just know this fact. A person commits sexual intercourse with the prosecutorix who is major by making false promise that he would bury her. But after she gets pregnant, he refuses to do so. Which of the following statement is correct? Uh, okay. Uh, in this case, what happens sometimes that you have to see, uh, this is uh, question number 160. Okay. In such cases, what you have to see is that uh, the, the concept of rape will come into the uh, fore. Why? Because uh, making false promises is the misconception of fact. That means you are deceiving someone. Deceiving here means that you are asking someone to do an act of sexual intercourse only when the other person is coming into misconception of a particular fact which is anyhow is uh, also taking away the 
freedom of the consent. That means consent has been taken by deception, which should not be the case. Let's see. No offense of rape, aisa to ho nahi sakta. Offense of rape, yes. No offense of rape, aisa nahi ho sakta. That means yehi bacha hai, aisa to pad lete hain pura. Offense of rape is committed as consent was obtained under misconception of fact. Two is your answer. Is me Dilip versus State karke case hai. Wo bhi aap par sakte hain making false promises of marriage and then. Uh, only for the pretext of uh, entering into sexual intercourse is something that is prohibited. Clear? Then comes the next. A commits house trespass in order to commit an offence punishable with life imprisonment. The act of A is punishable with. Uh, this is dealt under section 450. Section 450 if you will see. Uh, the punishment given is imprisonment not exceeding 10 years with fine. So, 2 is your answer. If you commit a house trespass in order to commit an offence punishable with a life imprisonment, you get this imprisonment. Section 450. X installed a live naked wire in a drain between his field and that of neighbour with an intention of preventing animals from entering his field. The neighbour was electrocuted and he died. X has committed an offence under section. Dekhiye, uh, if you can revisit the, your 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 uh, teachings of law of tort, where you would have read about negligence, where you would have read about uh, the case Cherubin Gregory, where it was said that if you are doing any of such thing which is dangerous to the other because you know that it, it is likely to cause death. If you uh, know about section 299, section 299 C or, or you may say section 299 ABC hota to nahi hai, par hum kar C, which is line number or you may say the part number 3 which where it is said that whoever causes death with the uh, knowledge that it is likely to cause death. This person had knowledge that it is likely to cause death. He did not put any warnings up there and the other person because it is also negligence. Uh, so, they did not put the warnings up there and that is why he uh, could be made liable for culpable homicide. But he never intended to cause death of someone that is why murder cannot come into four. So, 304 part one is your answer. Clear? Uh, this is 2. 2 is your answer. The constitutional validity of the death penalty was upheld by Supreme Court in the case of uh, Machi Singh to Badmi Ayatha. Bachchan Singh was the one. Bachchan Singh se pehle Jagmohan Singh mein ho chuka tha. Bachchan Singh was the elaborative. So, Jagmohan Singh is the case. Ye case agar aapko pata hoga, tabhi aap mark kar paayenge. Then, uh, the offence of stalking is punishable under section, all, all of you know, A is uh, sexual harassment, B is disrobing, C is voyeurism and D is stalking. So, 354 D. This was the new simple. Hai. The sentence which can be imposed upon a convict for default in payment of fine cannot exceed that of maximum sentence. It is one-fourth. One-fourth of maximum sentence. It is given under section 65, if I am not wrong. Section 65 mentions it is one fourth of the maximum imprisonment. 165. Please your answer. Clerk or servant committing breach of trust is punishable under uh, is punishable under section 408. Short title itself says three answer. Hai. Short title me dik jayega. Aapko andar padne ki zarurat bhi nahi hai. Then next, if a person entrusted with money diverts it. Uh, for his personal gain without intending to deceive, which section would likely be invoked? Look, 420 mein deception is the first ingredient. So, deception is not, so this will not happen. So, 420 is not going to happen. Here also 420 is written. Section 406 mein specifically deal kiya gaya hai. So, 2 is your answer. None of the above will not happen because 406 is specifically dealing with it. So, it is going to be 406. 2 is your answer. A attacks Z under grave incident provocation. B who was passing by having an intention to kill Z also takes advantage and attacks Z who dies. What is the offence committed by them? Dekhi, agar isme mains mein agar sawal aa jai, to sabse pehle, if these kind of questions comes in mains, first of all you have to explain what is section 38. 
two persons with uh, different intentions in a group if working, then they are held liable for their own offence. And this answer will be based upon section 38 only. But after then section 38, you go for section 35, talking about the concept of similar intention. Then you go to section 34, talking about the concept of common intention. Here common intention aati hai. Sorry, not common object, common intention. This is the sequence of law. First you go to 38, then you try to see that if there is any similar intention, then you go to 35. If there is common intention, you go to 34. If there is no common intention, 34 is uh, taken out. If there is no similar intention, 35 is out of the picture, then 38 comes into picture. 38 se hi hum ye govern karenge, dekho kaise. A attacks Z under grave and provocation. A attacks Z under grave and sudden provocation. Grave and sudden provocation is an exception to murder. That means A attacks Z could only be culpable homicide not amounting to murder because of the presence of exception. It is culpable homicide not amounting to murder. B who was passing by having an intention to kill. B was having a different intention to kill. That means they were not having common intention, they never shared, they were, there was no prior concert, although they both does not have similar intention. Why? Because his intention was to kill and A's intention was uh, influenced by grave sudden provocation. So intention to commit death will not be calculated, it will be seen as culpable homicide only. So intention to kill means intention to cause death. That means here B is seen to have the intention to cause death matlab murder 302 and here because it is by grave and sudden provocation so intention of kill was marred by the exception so it is culpable homicide not amounting to murder let's see aisa kuch hai kya murder as both has common, common intention to kill common intention to hai ni na mana kar diya there is no prior concert there is no fact of prior concert both are guilty of offense of culpable homicide not amounting to murder here it is not given like that there is intention to kill so this also does not suffice. Both are guilty of causing grievous injuries. Mar gaya wo. A is guilty of culpable homicide while B is guilty of murder. 4 is your answer. So simple. So simple. So easy. Just reading like a pro. What of the following is the punishment not satisfied under section 53 IPC? Uh, death is there. Rigorous imprisonment with hard labor. Yes, rigorous ka matlab hi hard labor hai. Simple imprisonment with hard labor. Simple or hard labor kabhi nahi hota, to ye nahi hai. Four feature of property to hota hi hai. Three is your answer. Not specified, na? Simple is never with hard labor. A person is convicted under section 279 IPC, which is uh, injury by rash and negligent act. He cannot be awarded the following sentence. Only simple imprisonment up to six months. Uh, the punishment given here is... Uh, this is 194, okay. Uh, the punishment given for 194 is 6 months. The maximum punishment that can be awarded for 279 is 6 months. Uh, or it could be fine, I just... Uh, look at quickly. Two seventy nine says uh, the punishment of either description for a term which may extend to six months or fine, which may extend to one thousand rupees, or one thousand rupees, or both. So a person is convicted under section 279 IPC, he cannot be awarded the following sentence. He can be awarded only simple imprisonment up to 6 months because it is of either description. That means rigorous bhi ho sakta hai or simple bhi ho sakta hai. So simple imprisonment of 6 months de sakte ho. Fine up to rupees 1000 in default simple imprisonment of 30 days. Uh, if uh, you can just give fine and uh, in default of the payment of fine, can you give 30 days imprisonment? Yes. You can give because it is one fourth of the maximum, and six months here means that 60, 60, 60, 180, 180, one fourth is uh, uh, maximum. What you can do is 
25 days, 25 or 30 days, that means it is, it is okay. Both simple or rigorous imprisonment up to 6 months and fine up to uh, rupees 1000, you can give this. Koi dikkat nahi hai. Both simple or rigorous because it is other description up to 6 months. Now in these kind of questions, uh, if you know the punishment properly, only then you will be able to attempt. Otherwise, you have to leave such kind of questions, obviously. Because if so much of calculations are to be done, there is a tendency that you might not remember each and every fact of that punishment. It is very clear. But still, I am just trying to give you the aspect. This is also okay. Fine up to rupees. Uh, when it is okay, fine up to rupees 1000 in default rigorous imprisonment of 90 days. Uh, giving rigorous imprisonment of 90 days is not because it is not one fourth. This should not be the case. That means this should be given. Fourth is your answer. Fourth is the answer. Fine up to 1000 in default rigorous imprisonment of 90 days cannot be given. Clear? Let's see the next one. A person held guilty of one of several specified in the judgment, but it is doubtful of which of the offences is guilty. The offender shall be uh, punished for all the offences mentioned in the judgment, shall not be punished, he shall not be punished for any offence. He shall be punished for the offence for which lowest punishment is provided. Makes sense. He shall be punished for the offence for which highest punishment is provided. Uh, let's see the provision. The provision is given under uh, section 72. Section 72 states that he shall be punished for the minimum, the lowest provided. 3 is your answer. An offence committed will be considered as an offence if at the time of commission of the offence, the offender uh, was below 7 years of age. No, that will not be considered as an offence. Was incapable of knowing the nature of the offence being of unsound mind. No was incapable of knowing the nature of the offence having voluntarily intoxicated. Voluntary intoxication is not protected. Voluntary intoxication is not protected. Involuntary is protected under section 87. So, ye to banta hai nahi. Under 86, 84, 85. Sorry, 85. So, ye to banta hai nahi. Yehi hoga. Had not intended to cause death and was done with consent of the good faith. This is also protected. 3 is your answer. Yehi pata chal gaya. Voluntary intoxication is not a defense. In which of the following circumstances is protection available for act committed by a person compelled by threats under section 94 IPC? Saaf saaf likha hua hai. There are two exceptions to this particular provision. That exception is murder and offense against state. If you are asked to commit murder or offense against state, even if you are under threat of instant death, no protection will be given to you. So, ye to banta hi nahi. Committing an offence under the threat of another, where the offender has a reasonable apprehension of gravest hurt, yaha mil jayega. Reasonable apprehension of gravest hurt hi hai. Clear? So, in third, sorry, in third, protection is available. Three is your answer. A person abets an offence if a person abets the commission of an offence, correct. A person abets the commission of an act which is committed would be an offence, correct. The act which may otherwise amount to an offence is not committed at the, or the requisite effect, correct. Aap section 108 par lije, explanation 2 par lije. You will get all the three things. Four is your answer. Y instigates and provokes Z to cause harm to X with a dagger on account of the feud between the latter two, that is Z, Z and X. However, Z decides otherwise. It is very common that if someone instigates you to do something which is an offence and the other does not, does not do that, you committed a petment, maybe he did not committed anything. So, Y has not committed an offence, Z has committed an offence of attempt to murder and Y cannot be held liable. Y has not committed the offence of a abetment. Y has 
committed the offense of abatement yes why has committed four is their answer read section 108 explanation 2 it is not required that the offense abetted must be committed for the offense of abetment which of the following is not an ingredient under section 304 b ipc that is dowry death physical assault resisting in injuries confining a woman to bed there has to be a death here it is confining to a bed that means it is only till gravest hurt and there has to be a death for dowry death so is me to death hi nahi ho rahi to yahi ingredient nahi hai women is subjected to harassment yes for cruelty in connection with demand of dowry correct offense occurred within 7 years yes offender is husband yes to yahi nahi hai one one is your answer and this is question number 200 i think there is no question after that so these all were the questions pertaining to pokso crpc and ipc if you have any doubt on any question if you want any have any query if you want any clarification for the discussion then you can put it in the comment box we'll come up with another video with c with the civil laws namely the cpc sra limitation arbitration and uh, commercial courts act we'll do that in the next video thank you so much for today we'll see you